super shoes for daily use? Where do you stand on this hot topic? Let's get to it. Hey guys, Ed Bud here. Time for one of my famous discussion sparking pieces. Cats and kittens, comment below with how you feel about this very hot topic. Are today's modern super shoes okay for daily use? Can you really use the Alpha Fly, for example, as your daily trainer? I know where I stand on all of it, but uh, we'll get to that. Let's be frank about it, guys. It's an expensive business, this super shoe trend that we're seeing right now. These models are seeming to get more and more expensive every single season. And I think perhaps durability of them is less and less of an issue. If we look at the very first Vaporfly 4%, I mean, the outsole of that one just crumbled away in no time, didn't it? The foams used these days seem to be more resilient. Fuel Cell, Zoom X and Power Run PB all stand the test of time. They've got a more Rambo-like constitution, haven't they? Which means they just last many more sessions before they're sadly depleted. I think one major issue that a lot of people had using this type of shoe in general really was that quite a lot of them had a narrow fit, a more race style shoe. Many wider footed runners in fact found them completely unusable when they picked them up. The next percent and the Alpha Fly still fall into that category don't they? A very narrow shoe in the arch and some people find themselves spilling over the edge of the midsole. A little bit like you're walking a tightrope perhaps in a circus or I guess you could say a little bit like you're hanging off the side of a mountain, like Stallone in Cliffhanger. I mean, this wasn't a shoe for everybody, was it? All you have to do is look at the actual arch area of the shoe to know that it's gonna be a, a tight fit. I gotta say that the Saucony Endorphin Pro doesn't really feel like that to me. Those observant viewers would have seen on Strava that I've been getting quite a few miles into the Endorphin Pro over the last few weeks. I wanna try and grind it down a bit before I hit the Pro too. And I have to say of all the super shoes that I've been very fortunate to test out, this is one of the most perhaps versatile of the lot. Perhaps the most daily, can I even say it? But the most daily sort of feel of all of them. Yes, of course the Endorphin Speed has a similar setup with that nylon plate, but in terms of a carbon plate shoe, I think the Endorphin Pro probably handles the highest range of paces, given a reasonable sort of underfoot feel than all of them. In terms of pace and effort levels, I just think it fits into a slightly different category. The pellet-based Pebax foam here in the Endorphin Pro offers full length forgiving foot cushion of the fatigue lessening fashion. None of this hangover on the arch section whatsoever, just a more traditional trainer vibe, I suppose. There, I said it. I mean, the Alpha Fly or the Next Percent as a daily shoe? I've got to be honest with you, I can't really see it in the same bracket as the Endorphin Pro. It's not in the same pigeonhole or category to me. Zoom X is far more squashy and compressive and vastly more reliant on that carbon plate, certainly in the heel, to provide some type of stability to the runner. Now, a lot of people used to say, you can't run slowly in any of these shoes. They're not designed for that. Well, is any running shoe specifically designed for running very, very slowly? Just think about that for a second. Running is about moving more quickly, isn't it? Yeah, we can get very technical about paces and things like that, but pace is kind of relative to the runner, isn't it? That aside, I don't really feel that the Alpha Fly or the Next Percent give any considerable benefit if you're gonna run slowly in them. I just don't think that the attributes of the foam here really give any significant benefit with that type of use. I mean, pounding more effort into the forefoot and the midfoot of the Alpha Fly, of course, is gonna give you some more return. It really enables those AirPods, and that simply isn't gonna be something that everybody wants to do. I mean, it's such an expensive shoe as well. I can't see people picking them up just to give them a whirl. It's too much cost. That's just my opinion, obviously, and I'm just one man. Right from when I first reviewed it, I found the New Balance Fuel Cell RC Elite to be just the right balance between all of the things you need in a super shoe. Stack height, cushion, propulsion, but then again, all of those things that I liked in this shoe were very similar to the attributes that I liked in the 4% Flyknit. It was just like a more fitting, I suppose, and comfortable to wear 4% Flyknit. It just didn't have that odd upper fit, certainly in the arch, which quite a lot of Nike shoes have and do turn lots of runners off from trying out the brand. I hear it all the time. They see me wearing Nike shoes and they say, I can't wear them. They're just too narrow. They just don't feel right. And you can see why, can't you? You can see it. 
It makes you wonder why Nike is so absolutely dead set on producing shoes like that. I think the RC Elite's a shoe that's so good really, it makes you drop to your knees and thank Steve Cram that you're a runner. The outsole vicious like a Rocky Balboa uppercut. Though oddly, the RC Elite's kind of moving away from that, isn't it? I put a poll out recently on the community section of the channel to see if you guys were interested in me picking up a pair to test them out. I've got them. Or at least they'll come in soon. Might be a quality street style review, that one. They're moving away from this more fitting style here in the RC Elite to a much wider toe box. A less minimal race feel and more an everyday feel. I have seen other reviewers say that as well. I'm quite keen to see exactly how much width there is in the toe box. So is that going to accommodate a few more runners that were perhaps put off from very narrow race shoe style feel. I think the shoe's also reported to be a little more true to size. So yeah, I hope me going in my normal New Balance size isn't gonna foul things up. Might be a little more forgiving on the toes. Maybe I'll feel like I wanna use it on a more daily basis if there's a bit more space there. More foam underfoot, cause that's what we always want, right? And a far less aggressive outsole pattern. I guess you could say that the outsole setup on the RC Elite 2 is a little closer to Stallone's character Hatch from the 1981 film Escape to Victory. Oh, an inspired film that is. Absolutely fantastic. Russell Osmond, Michael Caine, Pele, and Stallone. Is this a trend that we're gonna see mimicked by other running shoe brands in the near future? I mean, using these shoes on a daily basis as well, you have gotta think about the price. I mean, if we're gonna switch up running shoes after three, 400 miles or something, could get a bit costly. There's only a few that I'd really consider using on a more daily basis. The RC Elite there from New Balance. I don't think I could use the Carbon X2 on a daily basis. That just wouldn't work for me. It's just far too rigid there and the foam is, it's just too dense. Absolutely. And I'd just destroy myself in a couple of weeks. Oh, hang on, this hasn't got a carbon plate but very similar feel to the RC Elite. Maybe that's what New Balance were going for with the Rebel version too. See you later, Phil. So perhaps they're just making small adjustments to these super shoes to make them more appealing to non-elite runners. Because let's face it, the bulk of runners are non-elite people who just run and enjoy it. Yeah, they want to do races from time to time and they want to try and get the best times they can. But loads of these super shoes aren't actually worn by elite runners anyway. There's only a small handful of shoes that seem to get worn by the top athletes. We're seeing more forgiving fits in some of the shoes. Loads more cushion from the extra foam. More daily style outsole rubber. They sadly got rid of the one that's on the RC Elite. Is that making it more appropriate for road-based terrains, which Predominantly, people will run them. Will Nike launch something that's a little more like that? Or was the Invincible Run their take on a highly cushioned shoe? Certainly wasn't super to me. But I'm glad lots of you guys like it. What's your take, guys, on using super shoes for your daily training? Is it an everyday occurrence for you or a big no-no? Let me know down in those comments. A quick musical interlude for you. Again, with Apple releasing that high-res audio option, on their app. I've been listening to loads of older stuff just to take it in in a better format. One such album is from 2004 from Nick Drake. It's called Made to Love Magic. The first track is one of Nick Drake's most beautiful songs. His voice wispy, guitar work so woody and you just feel the atmosphere there. Wonderful. Magic. I think it's a track that he recorded but it was never released and they managed to sort of clean it up and get it out onto this album. Rider on the Wheel, wow. Yeah, what a tune, go and check that. If you don't like Nick Drake or you don't listen to anything else on the album, that one is really special. Magic as well is incredible. I think that was a Nick Drake vocal that they took uh, and managed to remove the guitar part from behind it. And then the composer got the music that had been made to go behind it, the string section, and then added Nick's vocals in on top. And it is a magical song. It's incredible. To me, it's kind of about how people forget what it's like when you're young and those feelings you have, that naivety. I always try and keep it, you know, sometimes it gets me slapped in the face or whatever by something that I didn't see coming, but why would you want to get cynical like that? I don't know. How does that make you feel good? It doesn't at all, does it? Time of No Reply as well, later in the album, is a real winner. This version, complete with a string section, 
I think the original one that I first heard didn't have that, but it really does add something to the song. Sometimes when they do these new versions and add in extra instrumentation, it can really take away from a track, but it really works here on Nick's Time of No Reply. Go and check it out, guys. A fantastic album, Made to Love Magic by Nick Drake. Right, it's time for me to head off and prepare myself for the feast of football that's happening today. If you haven't done so already, guys, please hit that subscribe button. Click the bell below for notifications of when I launch those new videos for you. And it really helps out the channel if you give this video a thumbs up like, and also share it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bird, and I'll be seeing you.